Hey everyone, it's the Snakey back again with another video and today I'm bringing you another Fight Night Champion video and I'm going to be talking a little bit about the fight that happened between Andy Ruiz Jr. and Anthony Joshua and I'm also going to be breaking down the rematch and who I think is going to be the victor in that fight. Now as you can see here I've got two created characters, I'm going to talk a little bit more about them later on. Before I actually go into the video I want to show you this on the screen. This is my betting slip for my winnings from that fight. I had 10 euros on Andy Ruiz Jr. to win this fight and I had that bet on a considerable amount of time before the fight happened. This is like a month before the fight was set to happen. And the reason I had money on Andy Reese Jr. is I recognised his boxing ability and I recognised the attributes that I felt were going to be dangerous for Anthony Joshua. And he was a much more dangerous fighter than Jarrell Miller, who was originally supposed to fight until he got done for doping. But yeah, that's my betting slip on the screen, and as I said, I was quite happy with those winnings, putting in 10 euro and getting 130 back. Now, why was I so confident in Andy Ruiz Jr., and how did the fight go down? Well, it was an upset, and a massive upset at that, probably one of the biggest in the heavyweight division in recent years. Um, I mean, it had shades of Vladimir Klitschko, uh, Corey Sanders, to me. I mean, that's, that's the way that it looked. Uh, Andy Ruiz Jr., very skilled boxer, Great boxing fundamentals, great counterpuncher, really good endurance for a guy of his build, and also has a very good chin. When you put all those things together, this was a nightmare fight for Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua's best attributes are his reach, his strength. He's a very strong man, he's a big man, and he can overpower his opponents, and he has decent boxing fundamentals as well. What Anthony Joshua's weak points are, I believe, his defense and his stamina he really lacks in the stamina department and i've said this before and i'm saying it again this is going to be his downfall when he comes up against the likes of andy reese jr a guy who is built to last and the even more deceptive thing about andy reese jr is when you look at him you don't think that he's a guy that's built to last you think this is a guy you're going to be able to blow out of there in a few rounds and i think that if anthony joshua wants to have any success in the rematch he's going to have to employ a different tactic than he did the first time now, the fight was broadcast in Ireland at around 4 a.m. in the morning, 5 a.m. I got up to watch it, and to be honest with you, I when I saw Andy Reese get knocked down early on, I was kind of a little bit disheartened. I thought that it was going to be a quick night for AJ, but very quickly, I could see that Ruiz was okay. He got back up, and he started right back into work again. Now, the, the most impressive thing about Ruiz for me was that he took a good shot from Anthony Joshua, got back up, and demonstrated something that will be the downfall of Anthony Joshua again and again unless he figures out a way to deal with it. And that is, if he tags somebody, if Anthony Joshua tags somebody, he generally tends, he's expecting them to go down if he tags them with a solid shot. He's not used to fighters walking into his shots, uh, dealing with them, and then coming back with accurate counter punches. And that's something that Dylan White showed us when he fought Joshua as well. He gave Joshua a lot of trouble by simply walking Joshua down and throwing back. And it takes a serious chin to do that because Joshua is a serious power puncher. I rank him marginally just, just after Wilder in terms of power in the heavyweight division. I see him as the second hardest hitter uh, in the of the current crop of heavyweights at the moment that we have that are ranked in the top 20. There could be guys on the way up through the ranks that I'm not fully aware of yet, but definitely out of the, the heavyweights that I know at the moment, uh, he's definitely got to be one of the heaviest hitters. So when he hit Ruiz with that shot, I think in his head, whatever doubt or sort of worry that he had or any you know mental issues that he had coming into the fight, this definitely exacerbated them. 10 times over because he didn't look 100% when he was um, when he was in the ring I remember I got up in, in the morning to watch the fight and my girlfriend got up as well she's not a massive boxing fan but she kind of just wanted to tag along because she knew it was a big fight and she knew I had money on it and even she said it I remember she said when he was in the corner at the start of the fight he doesn't look like he, he's, he's that interested he doesn't look like he wants to be there he was rolling the gum shield around in his mouth and I, I agreed with her. I thought that was a, a fair observation. If that was somebody that doesn't normally watch boxing saying that and has never boxed themselves, and you know that something's probably wrong. When Joshua came out, he looked decent in the, in the first round. There was nothing overly um, kind of worrying looking from his performance, but Ruiz just was a man possessed. He came into that fight to win, and when he did, he did it in very, very impressive fashion, um, more impressive than I thought. My original prediction for the fight was... 
I thought Ruiz was going to extend Joshua into the later rounds and eventually tire him out and knock him out then because I knew that he was a great flurry puncher and counter puncher. He, he really utilizes those skills that he has very well. We've seen that in his fight against Joseph Parker. And I had, I had seen fights previous as well um, that Ruiz had, not the Joseph Parker fight. And for every fight that he had, he just impressed me more and more when I saw him. And he's easy to overlook when you first see him because of his build. And I know there's lots of jokes flying around about that when when the fight was being announced first. But yeah, so he, he, he took Joshua to school, in my opinion. He took Joshua's best shots, he walked forward, and he he, he just, he, he really decimated. He, he took out Joshua in very impressive fashion. Now, what was the punch that did it? If you look back on the replay of the fight, a few uh, dodges there, uh, nice some nice fancy footwork in the game. If you watch the fight again, you'll see the first knockdown that Ruiz scored was behind the ear of Joshua. And we know that those punches they throw off your equilibrium. Those punches are the hardest to recover from. And because Joshua was thrown off so badly, Ruiz basically could do what he wanted with them and he took him out of there in convincing fashion. Uh, Joshua didn't want to continue. He wasn't knocked out cold. He just knew that he was gonna get put down again. And I also think he was gassed. I think he was exhausted as well on top of that. I think his fitness definitely needs to be called into question. Um, in terms of his preparation for the fight. Regardless of all this, what's the rematch going to be like and what is the outcome? I'm favouring Ruiz again. Uh, the bookies are once again against me on this, but I think Ruiz has a lot of advantages. True, he has the belts now, so he has more to lose than Joshua, but also Joshua has a considerable amount to, to lose as well, because if Joshua gets beaten a second time by the same man, is this going to become like a David Price effect again? Is the man who was supposed to be the man, is he all hype? And was he all hype? Sure, he bet some decent opponents, halfway decent opponents, but was he really as good as everyone was touting him to be? And those are the questions that people are going to start asking if Joshua gets beaten again by Ruiz. So I think Ruiz is the advantage in terms of you know mentality. And also I think he has the advantage in terms of his actual boxing skills. Uh, he isn't he isn't as powerful a puncher as Joshua. He's not going to be able to put Joshua out with one punch, you know, as was demonstrated in the first fight. He was nowhere near to he was nowhere near close to knocking Joshua out cold. But basically what he did was he threw Joshua's whole game plan off and he counter punched well he looked for opportunities and he hit him with effective punches that basically threw uh, Joshua's whole equilibrium off to the point where he was knocked down a number of times so even though he's not a concussive puncher he's definitely a dangerous puncher in bunches so it'll be interesting to see if he goes in with the same game plan next time I think if Joshua's to have any excess and success in the rematch he's going to have to try and box from the outside a lot more smartly than he did the first time he needs to work that jab we've heard that a million times before in boxing but for a man of his size he needs to use that jab there's no question about it and he also needs to try and look at wearing Ruiz down Ruiz is a durable guy but if you keep banging that body for six to seven rounds you know and he's not banging your body back well then you have a good chance of being in a much better position stamina wise than your opponent in the later round and i think that's what he needs to look to do to andy ruiz uh, but whether that's going to be possible or not i don't know until he's actually been put in that situation ruiz is durable and he's showed that before in his fight against joseph parker he's gone the distance with a good boxer i think he just needs to work on his stamina as well himself he needs to look at how he's going to extend himself maybe he's going to have to lighten down that frame a little bit he's carrying a lot of muscle on that i know that helps with his power but he might just have to overall um just just change up his game plan he's keeping the same trainer with rob mccracken and I think that's probably a wise move for this fight because he's had a good relationship with McCracken so far and I don't think bringing in a new trainer and uprooting everything now um, in such a pivotal fight is the, is the right move. So I think he should just stay with Rob McCracken and they just need to work on, they have plenty to work on uh, from the first performance. I think he can make it a lot more competitive against Ruiz next time. But I'm still favouring Ruiz going in. He's the better counter puncher, he's the better combination puncher, and he has got the better stamina and durability. So everything's kind of working in his favor, bar the power. If Joshua can catch him with a good punch or a few good power punches, he may be able to put him away. He was knocked down in the previous fight, so who knows? Maybe Joshua can finish him this time, but 
it's going to be a big call. The final thing in today's video is I know people are going to be asking me, Snakey, how did you make these characters? Well, for Ruiz, I used a video tutorial by a channel called Hackos or Hackos. He was speaking Spanish in the video, so I just kind of followed along with what he was doing, but it was a pretty clear video. You should go check that video out. I'll put it in the description down below. For Joshua, all I did was I just took a look at him from the last fight and just kind of modeled a character roughly around him. I gave him the Mike Tyson physique and I gave him the low fade haircut and a bit of facial hair and the white shorts and boots did the trick really. He kind of looks fairly okay. Not the best model ever, but because Game Face has been closed down now, we can no longer model faces for this game, which is a real shame because the online is still going. You can still fight online. I've had some fights recently, but it's kind of sad how they're stopping support for it. Also, you might as well notice that if you try and go to the boxer share uh, functionality in the game using backwards compatibility on Xbox One, you won't be able to use it. For some strange reason, they haven't, uh, they haven't basically made it available on Xbox. Whether it's something to do with the emulation on the Xbox One or something, I'm not 100% sure, but slowly you can see features are starting to be paired away and it's a great shame because this game is still fantastic to play today it's still a game that i put on regularly and i really enjoy making videos for it they're videos that i actually actively really enjoy putting up and i love recording them as well and creating new characters so it's going to it's going to be a real shame the day that all that we're going to be able to do is play offline because there are very few people still playing on it as it is i really hope that EA give us a new boxing game soon. I think it's well overdue. I know it'll probably end up costing them a lot of money to get all the licenses of the boxers individually, but I think it'd be a great alternative um, for fight fans that you know are sick of the UFC games. We know there's a UFC 4 coming, but it's a real royal shame that there hasn't been another fight night game, and maybe there never will be. We'll just have to see. That's been my fight video, my fight sort of analysis on the Andrew Ruiz Jr. versus Anthony Joshua bout and their rematch which will be probably happening sometime in November and December. If you enjoyed my video please thumbs up, leave a comment if you have any questions you want to ask me guys, I'm always interacting with people as best as I can and stay tuned because there will be another video coming soon. Thanks again guys.